Hey, what's up, everyone? This is the Grand Duke coming at you with the HeroScape Top 10. I've seen some other Top 10s, some I agree with a lot, and some not so much. So here's my take. These are my Top 10 favorite units in the game of HeroScape. Now, before I go any further, when I say favorite, I'm saying whether by effectiveness, abilities, enjoyment of use, or frequency of appearances, and by army builds, these are the best units for me in the game of HeroScape. Now what you see on my screen is Tabletop Simulator. Uh, it's on Steam for $20, and in the Steam Workshop you can find the Hero Escape mod for free download. So check the description for that info. It has everything Scape in there. So share your thoughts with me if you agree with any of the points that I make in the video, or if you have differing opinions. Make sure you let me know that as well. With that, let's dive in. Starting with number 10, we have Sir Gilbert. Flag bearer for Jandar, he has remarkable synergies with Jandar squads. After his turn, he can use Jandar's Dispatch to move friendly Jandar squad figures depending on his role. This speeds up slower squads and increases the effectiveness of bonding synergies, namely the Knights of Weston. With decent stats and survivability and an adjacent attack buff to melee units, he's a solid option for any Jandar-based army comp. Number 9 was a hard one for me. I'm going to call it a tie between the Protectors of Ullar and the Sentinels of Jandar. Starting with the Protectors, they're a flying and ranged squad, and if you get an early hit on an enemy hero and ride the wave with combined Arbalest, you can really make a solid one-turn kill on a beefy hero. You just have to find a way to defend these guys. The Sentinels of Jandar, these guys boast one of the greatest survivability rates among squad figures. Of course, they fly, and every shield rolled counts as two. So if you have Elevation, a Glyph bonus, or Defensive Auras, the Sentinels maximize the benefit of these buffs. Not to mention I love their Son of Odin design. At number 8, Adlaga the Kiri Warrior. For starters, he buffs the movement of all Kiris, like the aforementioned Sentinels and Protectors. He also boasts the potential to delete an opposing figure from the game. Alar's Bolt of the Witherwood is a 1 in 5 chance to basically destroy your opponent's most expensive hero, at a range of 5 spaces. Even as a standalone figure, though, after using the Bolt, he's still a ranged flyer with 4 attack for only 90 points. Number 7, the Zedian Guards. The only unique squad on my list, they've been with us since the beginning, Red Rise of the Valkyrie, and have always been a joy for me to use. If you lose them, you lose them, but their high defense always makes opponents think before potentially wasting their attacks. Elevation and Zedian targeting mean that they can kill their point value or more with good positioning, so just make sure you keep them in those low-risk positions. Moving along, number 6, Braxis. Dragons are great, and Braxis is, in my mind, the most potentially game-changing. She decimates squads and even has the potential to melt heroes away with the Acid Breath. She shouldn't go down quickly with 8 life, but let's be honest, 3 defense is pretty average among all the units in the game. But she can still target 3 enemies per turn with her Acid, and she can be the object of bonding with the Greenscale Warriors. Halfway done. Now on to number 5, Ornak. General Utgar's Orcish Flag Bearer has perhaps the most versatile bond in the game. While only applicable to turn 1, the Red Flag of Fury Aura can allow for wild bonding combinations. You can activate two Utgar Dragons at once, or you can bring in some AoE units. This allows for a potentially dominant first turn that can wipe out enemy order markers 2 or 3 if that's how the dice fall. Maybe you've been surprised at some of my selections so far, maybe not, so try this one on for size. Number 4 is Guilty McCreech. The Einar Laman is one of my favorite ways to fill out an army. If I have a few points to spare and need some range, he's always there for me. Situationally, he can excel at late game cleanup, especially against melee based figures. Double attack is always a good ability to have, so give him some distance and elevation and your opponent will regret not dealing with him earlier. He is a kiting beast. At 2 defense and 2 life though, he's squishy. He is cheap, though, so like I said, disregard him at your own peril. Before we crack the top three, here are some honorable mentions. For bonding capabilities, green scales, arrow gruts, Kapuan gladiators, knights of Weston, you get the ideas with these guys. Next, Isamu. At only 10 points and with the ability to vanish, 
yeah, you're at 490 points and a 500 point army build. Were you really going to pick Otanaji? No. And then Zelrig. Like Braxis, he can serve as a counter to the game of Squadscape. Common squads tremble in fear when they have to face him. Top 3, here we go. Number 3, Kaminawa. With a strong range of 7, attack of 4, he can be a menace to those who want to approach him. If they reach him and are engaged, his 4 defense with Counter-Strike is never easy to conquer. Additionally, he has a close range double attack special. He's simply a solid hero, any way you put it, and he's one of my all-time faves. Number 2, the Phantom Knights. A common squad valued at 70 per card, these green ghouls have an exceptional combination of mobility and survivability. They roll 7 defense against ranged normal attacks, and once they engage they still have an attack of 3 and defense of 4, which are great sparring characteristics. Did I mention they fly? Stealth flying too, so they can disengage at will and switch to priority targets. Love these guys. Finally, we've reached my number one, and it's the gladiator, Crixus. Five life, five move, five attack, three defense, the object of Kapu and gladiator bonding, and one crucial ability. One shield defense ensures that if you roll at least one shield but don't block an attack, he still only takes one wound. An attack of five can be devastating against nearly any unit, and he's still as hard to kill as they come. When facing him, you have to focus him down, or he will tear through well more than his points worth of your figures. TLDR? He's coming, and he will reach you. With the CG squad and perhaps Retiarius or Spartacus to join in on the fun, it's almost always a safe but deadly play to activate Crixus any chance you get. He's a menace, both to figures and to opponents' morale. So, that concludes my top 10 list of my favorite HeroScape units. Agree or disagree? I'd love to hear what you have to say down in the comments. And don't forget to check out the HScape mod on Tabletop. It has every official figure and terrain piece, and it has huge possibilities. Well, that's all I have for this video. So until next time, I'm Duke. You guys enjoy some scape. Live peaceably with everyone. Love your neighbor. And I'll see you all later.